Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode today, we're going to take a look at using Inkscape to integrate with Tinkercad for a 3D printed part. So in the last episode, or, or two episodes really, we looked at... Um, creating a mount for the tripod for the camera slider project which I've been working on and uh, you know we'd laser cut it and it didn't turn out as we needed because of some of the dynamics so one of the things I figured as I mentioned in the last um, episode is that we would jump over to uh, potentially 3d print it so let's go ahead and get started I'm going to share with you a couple tips and tricks of working with Inkscape and Tinkercad and why you would want to do that so the first piece is we're going to start out, you remember uh, we had a 73 uh, millimeter base and then we wanted kind of to keep with that. So let's go ahead and create that 73 millimeter base again. Now since we're going to 3D print this, we're going to keep this right to 73. We, we really don't need to go bigger because we don't need to worry about the bolts because we can recess the bolts in inside of this object so it's just going to be 73 which I think will make it a little bit more unique if you will um, the other piece that we want to do is um, so, so we're going to have the 73 millimeters in diameter and we're going to have to put uh, two bolt holes. We're going to use number eight bolts to attach to the maker rail. And if you go back and look at some of the videos on maker rails, uh, you'll find that this is a cheap alternative to buying the T slots because the number eight nuts fit into the into the rails uh, very nicely for the most part. And in the center, we're going to do a, a, a quarter twenty hole, so basically a quarter inch hole in in the center. So. Um, uh, we're going to go ahead and do the center hole first. And I just want to kind of double check. I have the nuts and calibers, so basically do do the conversion. So I'm going to want to go about, I'm going to go a little bit liberal, about 6.2. Now, one of the pieces, one of the tricks I will share with you in, in 3D printing is what I typically do is I will go... I will add at least the layer height to the dimension because one of the pieces that happens as the layer gets laid down, uh, it gets pressed out. And, and typically I found at least it's going to get pressed out roughly the diameter uh, you know, of the, the layer itself or a little bit more. So one of the things, go at least that proud or at least that's my, my recommendation. and. Um, or a little bit more always oversize uh, you know for an opening because the, the plastic for the most part at least with ABS is going to press it now PLA does seem to be a little bit different to be honest with you it doesn't have the same squeeze factor at least it's been my experience but most of my uh, work has been done in PLA so anyways uh, with all that rambling being said Let's create this down to 6.2. So this is going to be our center passage point uh, for a quarter 20 uh, bolt for the tripod head. And uh, I want to think here a second. Now we're going to do the line. And then so center, center. So we now have that in the center. And um, here we don't have to be so particular with stroke and fill. So, but... Uh, we will we will bump this up to at least 0.25 uh, just so we can kind of see this better okay so we have now our center hole we have our plate general plate design now what we need to do is uh, go in and place our uh, number eight bolt holes so one of the things I'm going to do is just put a couple guide marks here uh, to help me with a few things. And again, I'm just going to cheat a little bit. Just kind of line them up by eye. That should be close. Uh, no, I know I got that one off. So this, th and this is one of the things that I like about working in, in 2D. Um, is you can really get, get 
get the stuff lined up. So you'll notice that I'm a little bit off. So let's let's see how this guy is in reference to this. So I want to zoom in a little bit because I do want to get this pretty close. Oops, two fingers on the mouse. That's bad. Two fingers on the mouse. A little bit butterfingered with the mouse this morning. Okay, so that that looks a lot better. So it looks like we're lined up on our our plate and our first circle. So one of the things that we need to do is now near the edges here, but not too close to the edges because we're going to have to recess the head. And also we want to be able to distribute the the uh, pressure of holding this plate to the rail. And that's one of the the things that you need to think about in designing something is what are the physics of it. Um, so one, one of the things if you notice we're, we're, we're roughly at a hundred and, and the moving in here so what I'm going to do is roughly 20 in I'm going to place my other guideline for uh, putting my number eight holes and then so 120, one mark past. Roughly. So there we have our our positioning for we'll position our number eight holes here. And what this will do is give it a a, a very short throw between um, connection point to the tripod versus connection point to the maker rail because the further we go out on this the more cantilever action or lever action that this will pose to the, to the number eight bolt so we want to keep that minimized so we're going to bring some uh whoops some circles we're going to make some circles some more circles and then what we're going to do is um, I believe a number eight uh, bolt shaft diameter is about 3.8 if I recall correctly so let's just double check 3.8 3.9 so I'm going to make it um, uh, roughly uh, 4 let's call this 4 for good measure and 4 alright so we now have this. So we'll place this along the lines. Um, oh, I keep forgetting shift arrow, and this is not the same. All right, so we have this, and then all we have to do is we just simply clone this, and. We do alt arrow to kind of line this up, and so now we have this. So now, this is this is our basic object, if you will. So, which is good. We got this all set up. Um, where do I want to go from here? So, oh, okay. So the other piece we need to do is uh, bang through this, do path, and then difference. And let's see. No, that didn't work. For some reason it wants me to do pass and differences um, individually um, actually um, I'm going to take both of those back because uh, I'm going to do something first uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to copy the whole piece and then move it down here um, for grins and giggles and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back zoom back in on this one and then do this so I have a non uh, difference version so we're going to go through and we're going to do difference of this we're going to do difference of this um, All right, so we have this. Is this is now one object? So what we want to do is I turn our attention to this object. Now I, I'm going. 
the reason I did this is I want to show you guys another little trick um, with with importing objects because one of the things we're going to do is import this object or these objects plural into Tinkercad and kind of wanted to show you a couple a couple tricks with this uh, piece so so but everything has to line up for this so that's why why we cloned we cloned uh, we cloned it so um, I want to make sure we I think we need to scoot that over just a tad Just making sure I could have lined it up, uh, used the align tool beforehand, uh, but didn't think of it, and it's not that critical. However, the next thing we want to do is I want to change the size of these holes because I need to make an opening in the base to recess the heads. So the heads on a number eight bolt, which will be recessed into these openings. Um, is going to be about 0.6 so I'm going to go I can go a little bit liberal I can go 0.7 to give it plenty of room so let's go ahead and do that and so the oh the for the shaft it's four and I'm gonna go seven uh, to recess the head and we're gonna come back here line this up and then I'm just going to dump this and simply remember in our last tutorial copy and paste is our friend uh, the more you can replicate objects I think the better off you are because you're getting the same same object rather than something that's really really close but maybe a little bit different all right so we've now created this base so you see these are larger than this hole so we can recess um, the uh, the number eight uh, heads into these objects so let's go ahead and let's also uh, make a path out of this um, So we're, all we're doing is creating creating a uh, a difference between this. So this whole thing becomes one object. Um, so this is now all one piece, as this is all one piece. So okay, so we have uh, these pieces done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, export these. Now I want to export them as as two different pieces and. Um, the easiest way for me to do this to be safe is to just de delete one of the objects temporarily. So um, if I wanted to be real particular, if I was doing a, a real uh, larger part, I should have saved this whole thing as one object, but I'm going to live dangerously, but I don't recommend it. So I'm going to save a copy as, and then I'm going to go and through my myriad of drives, um, find my uh, SVGA storage folder. So here it is, SVGA. So I've got a, a standard folder for SVGAs. Um, compressed. So we have a number of VGAs to, to sort from. I believe regular uh, Inkscape SVGA should work. So I'm going to label this one. Um, tripod dash top and then I'm going to save it and then I'm going to hit control Z to bring back my other one and then I'm going to delete the top one and then I'm going to do the same thing save copy and thankfully it's brought me back to this and then I'm just going to click that to kind of autofill and then I am going to go uh, bottom real original and then click save and then I'm going to hit control Z to bring bring the other piece back alright 
So now, let's for the moment of truth, let's jump into Tinkercad. So I've got already got a work plane open in Tinkercad. So what you want to do is go into Tinkercad, uh, choose File, uh, select File, and then choose File. And then what we'll do is we're going to again go through a myriad of uh, drives and files and SVGA and then what we're going to do is we're going to import the top first it really doesn't matter um, and then one of the things we can adjust it later we're, we're just going to this is the top we're just going to accept 10 millimeters 100 percent scale and we're going to click import and there's our piece now one of the interesting things is if I bring my ruler over here we'll notice that this thing is jimongous. Um So why sometimes um, Tinkercad does this with SVGA files, I have no clue. But one of the things is if you know your origins uh, file size, which is very important, you can just put that in. So we're just going to change this back to 73 and everything should come back out. So, so we now have the top piece of our uh, tripod mount there and then so what we're going to do is we're going to choose um, the bottom and we're going to do the same click open and import and again we have a jimungus version and we're just going to scale this down to 73 and 73 and it might be the Inkscape version, but I, I, I work out of several applications on the Mac, too, and import them, and, and they do oddities like that. Some Sometimes it works, sometimes it, it doesn't as far as scaling. But that's where, if you know the origin scale of your object, which is very important, and also important, as I showed in the Laser Cutter episode, too, um, that uh, if you know that then you can just reset the objects dimension so okay so we have the two pieces however in in our mix and one of the pieces that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color so we know the difference between top and bottom at least for right now and one of the things we're gonna to have to do is we just imported these as 10 millimeters high for for grins and giggles but now we need to get serious about this. So we're going to need to adjust our bottom. So basically our bottom is going to have to be just big enough to cover the head of the um, 8 millimeter screw. Basically no thicker. And so uh, if I remember right, and I've got a pair of calibers and a number 8 in my hand right now. If I remember right, it's uh, about 3.7. So I'm going to say that it, and, and this is going to be a little bit interesting play because I'm going to say I'm going to say three I'm, I am going to go 3.7 on this um, that should be enough uh, actually I'm going to fit I'm going to go 3.8 just to be on the safe side I want to make sure I get enough coverage but the part the other part too is I am using um, I want to make sure I tell you the correct size here. So I'm using, if I can measure it real quick, I'm using a 15.7 meter or meter huh, millimeter long um, number eight bolt. So one of the pieces is is I need to to pull it tight because it's going to hit the bottom of the rail with a nut. I need to have this overall structure a certain thickness. Uh, which which will come into play in our, our top version now. So one of the things that I want to do is bring the top over and basically I am going to be I need about 7.15 millimeters of gap in this top piece in order for the to be able to pull that nut tight or yeah pull that bolt tight against the nut and I just want to double check my measurements uh, because as, as you probably saw in the last one um, you know measure twice cut once so this is actually showing that I have a thread length of 12.3 millimeters 
uh, but yet I'm going to screw this into the maker rail so I need to understand what the what the dynamic of that is and that comes out to be roughly 6.6 .6 fully inserted so I'm gonna say I think for the sake of um, argument I'm going to make this this seven seven whew, I'll spit it out seven millimeters is still early in the morning all right so now one of the pieces that uh, we need to do is now join these together so let's uh, kind of like uh, a bit of a sandwich here and then so I want to scroll this up so one of the first things I want to do is align all of this so we're gonna go to the align tool and we're gonna do we're gonna do an align on all this and uh, we're going to need to go up and this is one of the pieces I don't really like about Tinkercad is is the vertical control you have is very limited and uh, how much you have how much overlap you have well let, let, let's see so it's saying I've got because this is an important function because this is this first bottom piece is sitting on the work surface so what Tinkercad with the ruler tool is telling me that this is four millimeters above the surface and so if I remember correctly this is 3.8 so I've got a 0.2 millimeter gap however it doesn't look like it now if I were to go to print this out it's gonna print this as two pieces and I'm going to be really really bummed um, so one of the things I need to do is make sure I've got a little bit of overlap and and remember by by giving up that overlap so if I go th whoops three point seven now I'm going to now I, I'm clearly gonna have some overlap because point uh, one millimeters so I should have a good join because this is three point eight but now remember I lost I will have lost point one millimeter because you see here the red has now pushed through um, you know because its diameter is smaller so when you're doing the layout of your part you need to kind of keep those those pieces in mind um, that is you put things together and, and you have to create the join then you you could have some challenges there and in, in diameters and things like that so if I was truly expecting 3.8 then I would have a problem because as we said before um, let me just double check here because well you know I I've, I've got about 3.6 but you know what I'm going to do <clears throat> I'm going to change my mind here and this is one of the great things about CAD programs and you're watching this this design piece live so I'm going to take this back up to to 4 4 millimeters and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, increase the height of this to 4.1 so I want to make sure I've give my head enough enough clearance into this and so again I've now I've now given myself 4.1 in the bottom I now I'm now at 4 so I've got a reasonable overlap um, in the two objects and so I'm, I shouldn't have any distance shouldn't is the key word we'll see when it prints out and then let's let's join these both together so we're gonna group these so we have them as one object now one of the things I don't like is this line here see this line this is telling me I pretty much probably have some sort of problem that that point one is not enough so I'm gonna go back I'm gonna ungroup this one and I'm gonna go back and I'm going to say that this is 4.2 and and move that up and then now what I'm gonna do is just for grins and giggles reselect everything and then I wanna make sure I run uh, now I seem to be see these are grayed out so I'm aligned at both of these so I'm still good here so now let's see what if what happens if I group them again 
and I'm still showing that line which is bothering me so I'm going to uh, since I've gone up 4.2 I am going to drop this down to 3.9 it's kind of interesting I've never quite measured in Tinkercad the precision that the overlap needs to occur before it's it's a solid overlap um, so that's let's go a little bit more I'm going to make this 4.3 and then I'm going to bring this down to 3.8. So I should already have a, I should have a pretty reasonable overlap. And, and you can kind of see I want to sh I kind of want to show you and, and part of the reason I'm going through this is is I, I want to share this because you can see this band area. This is my overlap area in the object and what can be happening is um, <clears throat> it, it's, it, it might simply be an artifact of, of Tinkercad and sometimes that happens so I'm just going to accept it for what it is um, I should have enough overlap even though um, Tinkercad is displaying something unique and if we look inside we can see the we can see the um, the pockets for the heads, the pass-throughs for the shaft, the center uh, center shaft for the 1020. Um, so th this is kind of a unique view because we're actually inside the object. And so if I if I take it, what I don't like is I can see this rib around here, and I think part of that might be, and how do I explain it in in the way that uh, Tinkercad has made the circle. I, I'm not a huge fan of how Tinkercad creates circles uh, because this is really a complex hexagon with just a whole lot of sides, not a true circle. Um, and I don't think sometimes Tinkercad puts enough uh, in there. But anyways, uh, it's kind of getting a little bit too deep for this one. We'll just we'll just see how it goes from there. All right, so the other thing we need to do is we need to bring in a hex object. So now we need to be able to recess our nut into here. So that's going to be a critical piece. And what's going to be um, even more critical piece is getting, getting all the sizes right. So but let's start with first a hex object. And, and one of the things you'll notice, and I've, I've done a video on this, a hex object is not circular. So you'll notice that this is 20 tall by 1732 wide. And so that is part of the reality of, of a hex head. Now, you know, so if you, you know, because your first tendency might be to make it square, don't do that because you'll have problems just like I did. So the width of a 1020, uh, sorry, not a 1020, a, a quarter 20 nut is basically 10.9 millimeters so the short side um, here would be 10.9 however I for strength I want to epoxy this nut into this structure so I am going to make this um, I'm gonna make this about 11.3 and so it's very it's important to know I made this 0.4 I'm gonna make this 11.4 Actually, just for for sake of round numbers, because that's that's a, that will be a half a millimeter outside of my nominal dimension. So this, so the height of of a of a quarter twenty is twelve three. So we're going to make this twelve eight to match. So I just want to I just want to cover what I did. So I've added a half a millimeter for plastic, you know, expansion as well as to be able to put a little bit of epoxy on the nut. Uh, so this is why I've overscaled. And also we talked about uh, height and width are not the same. So now we're going to create this to a hole. We're going to put this into the center of our object. And just to be all good and golden with this, we're going to do a quick line on it just to make sure it's really in the center of our object. And now it is. 
and so we're going to turn back to this view because what we're going to do is we're going to do this so right now we can see we're at zero so it's sitting at the bottom of the object so this is going to cut all the way through now one of the pieces that that so I did go back and I did measure the the tripod uh, the uh, stud coming out of the tripod and basically I've I got about uh, 630 seconds or about 4.63 millimeters of, of uh, rod coming through which isn't which isn't a lot um, so I'm gonna print this and now this this is where can kind of follow along with me if you can some of the logic here so if we're printing at 0 0.2 0 0.2 millimeter layer height if we were to print one millimeter we're basically going to have five layers of plastic between so we're going to have our starter layer and, and for the sake of discussion we're going to assume our starter layer is the same usually starter layers are thicker shells are thicker um, but we're going to say it's just the same for, for, for easy design principles right now um, so that's going to be roughly five so if we were to if we were to put one millimeter here because we're, we're getting pretty thin so if I do one millimeter, uh, let's take a look at what that looks like. So we now have a hole in the bottom. We don't have much of a hole, but let's let's kind of go inside the object and look at what, what it looks like. So we can see here that, and I'm going to pan my object over. Whoops. Um, so, so you can see here, if I get get the orientation right, so now we're inside the object. I've got one millimeter before we hit the nut. So this is going to be about five layers. This isn't going to be too much at all to hold this. So if I was going to depend upon this to hold this, I would be sorely disappointed. And this is one of the reasons I've decided I'm simply going to have to epoxy it so I get connection in the sidewalls in the top uh, of the nut to this. Because at one 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 millimeter, ooh, I'll spit that out, that means I'm only going to have contact, thread contact, of about um, three millimeters because one of the things the nut is going to have a bit of a flange on it so I am going to probably lose my 0.635 or at least uh, part of that to to the flange before it actually makes contact to the threads. Now this, now I don't mean to get too heady in all this but if you're going to do this and you're going to be serious about this these are some of the things that you need to think about when you're designing your part and I mean think about those designers that design cars airplanes rocket ships. I mean all of this has to be taken into account as you're designing a part it's not just so simple as oh yeah I got a quarter 20 bolt and blah 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 so anyways th this is part of the logic so I'm gonna have basically five runs of plastic which isn't a lot in this space um, and you know you know if I was really going for resiliency I would probably go for a 0.1 build layer uh, so I would actually get more fused layers of plastic but for what I'm doing this is fine in the fact that it, it just sometimes easier to epoxy it so anyways what I'm going to do is now just simply select all of this and I'm going to group it and I should be roughly done <clears throat> now what I'm going to do, so I'm going to do something with this and kind of, um, I, you know, I want to, I want to test this. Uh, so how do I test this? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I am going to download for 3D printing. I'm going to download an STL and I will show you how you can test this. So this is another free trick that you will learn. And so, um, where am I at? I always keep clicking the wrong drive. So then I'm going to click my to print file. And this is an ingenious something or another. And I'm going to leave it at that because I want it to be ingenious. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Tinkercad. And uh, I don't overly suggest leaving these. I'm going to create a new object, but uh, you know I'll delete it later because you don't want to you know clutter up your Tinkercad and everything however what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose file and I am going to go back back here I'm going to go here to print and where's my ingenious um, 
Do you see my ingenious thing here? Oh, here it is. I love the way Tinkercad makes names, so I'm just going to import it. <clears throat> and then see, we have this... Um, It does, it does appear that it will print be, because I don't have the solid band, but there are some artifacts. Because what I've now done is I've imported the solid object, not its parts, uh, into Tinkercad. So, so this, this will see it as how it will be built, not how it was assembled. Now that's, that's, that's very important. Um, because when we we switch back so let, let, let's actually open up a new tab here and so I'm gonna go back and then I'm gonna go back to the um, original part so as you see when it assembles the part it's assembling the pieces of the part not it's not the complete part but when we go here we look at this imported file this just takes the the combined STL of the output and this is what we're looking at and you can see we still have artifacts of, of the side here and um, I think you know and you can kind of see the uh, if, if it's coming out on the, the screen um, on your screen you can see these vertical striations uh, basically because as I mentioned this is a big hexagon and I think what happened is is um, the way it created the hexagon from the two parts so I don't see this as being a, a, a functional problem but possibly more of simply a cosmetic problem and sometimes you re literally can't get rid of these in Tinkercad unless you create um, another object so let's let's uh, for grins and giggles I want to try something so we know we're at a 73 um, millimeter so let's take thin tube and for grins and giggles we're gonna make this 73 by 73 whoops that's the wrong way uh, if you look at this Joe you probably whoop. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you probably a little trick to get get rid of this so we, we bring this over here and it's only two millimeters and what is the 10.8 is the height here so let's make this 10.8 and let's align all this and okay so that's beauteous so we now got this in we're now we're we're still showing those 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 artifact lines because we probably need to go um 73 73 so let's make this 73.1 and let's go 73.1 kind of pushes out now let's bump it up a little bit more 73.2 so a little bit of this is just playing with it 73.2 uh, but I don't know which object I think I got the feeling I'm messing with this so let's 73.1 let's go 73.2 73.2 whoops come on folks 73.2 and 73.2 and then let's just highlight it all let's do quick adjustment because I want the diameter to be a little bit bigger you will notice that I've protected my my inter components and I simply created another one uh, that goes around the outside now let's see what happens if we group this and well we still seem to have the artifacts let's let's do something just real quick for grins and giggles so let let's make this 73.5 and uh, so 
meet the 73.5 Oops, it might even have so we're still showing a little bit on there and group um, it hasn't gotten rid of the total artifact still showing a bit of the artifact Let's ah uh, come on separate. What if we just make this seventy four? Let's let's cut to the chase here. And then so that's definitely far bigger than the our base seventy three millimeter object. I'm just trying to figure out at what point do we kind of lose the. Uh, so I can show you. Okay, so you notice we've we've now since we've used a third artifact, and this this is probably a good point. And this is a trick that I use. I didn't expect the artifact to be such a big problem, um, but but it was, and I think it might be part of the residual. But you you notice that since we did the larger piece, that the three blended into one. Uh, much better and also notice that we don't have a top residual piece so I think part of the problem with the line was the fact that we that we had two uh, SVG files that we brought together and I think part of it was the the math on the alignment uh, wasn't e exactly in tune even though we kept them lined up uh, I, I think if you would have printed it before you would have been just fine however I did want to show by bringing in the tube object we were able to smooth the side out and, and remove the artifact and and therefore remove the fact uh, that we would have any type of issue printing it so we've now gone inside and again we can see inside of our structure we have the well for our bolt we've got about one millimeter down here uh, of uh, separation between the bed we've got our recessed uh, holes to you know for our heads of our number eight bolts so I think we're actually good to go and getting ready to print this so so sorry about the end part there but I thought it would be would be good to show how if you have that be, because again I've had some prints become and it's not to say that this one would have been a problem and maybe we should have printed it and gone back and saw I think I think it would have printed just fine to be honest we would have just had some artifact uh, artifacting in, in the side of the object uh, in the different layers where the diameters might have been very slightly different so but anyways we, we, we used the, the third ring to do do away with that to create the outside that's actually smooth and you can kind of think about this in pieces because you can kind of think that the whole outside of this is actually that third ring we added while the core of this is our original components so we actually brought together three pieces so and I also showed you how to bring in pieces from Inkscape now I, I prefer designing an Inkscape or vector graphics program and then bringing those pieces in to Tinkercad and extruding them uh, for my end product. Uh, that's my preference because I can use grid lines and, and, and line up stuff a lot more. I'll be doing a video on some workflows where I show how you can use on, on a Mac, unfortunately, not a PC. You can use something like uh, um, uh, I think it's X copy or something like that. Uh, I forget the name of the program. It's a screen layout program that embeds um, graphical measurement tools into the uh, desktop. And so you can use those for measurements instead. So anyways, uh, hopefully this helped. Now we're going to send this to an, you know the printer and we'll go print it and we'll see what we come out with. So stay tuned for the second half of this. Give it a thumbs up if you learned something. Hopefully you did. You got one of these for the holidays. Uh, you know 3D printer and you're following along and this is kind of helping you with both Inkscape and uh, Tinkercad.